The War of Wrath. The Downfall of Numenor. The War of the Ring. Timeline of Middle-Earth. While I'm certain that most people viewing this video have at least some understanding of the events of the War of the Ring, as presented in Lord of the Rings, the history of Middle-Earth encompasses many, many years prior to those events. Throughout this series, I have attempted to showcase some of the major events, peoples, and creatures in Tolkien's Legendarium, but I hope that this video will serve as an overview for the sequence of events throughout Middle-Earth history. We of course will not mention every event, nor will we use many dates, to avoid confusion, but I believe you'll finish this video with a better understanding of Tolkien's timeline. In the beginning, there was only Eru Iluvatar, the god of creation. During this time of prehistory, he created the Ainur, immortal spirits of varying power that assisted Eru in creating the planet of Arda. One of these Ainur, Melkor, was not in complete harmony with the others, and introduced discord into the creation. As part of this creation, Eru made two different races of people, known as his children, the elves and men. Some of the Ainur, including Melkor, were sent to Arda to shape and prepare it for the awakening of Eru's children. Here, they were known as the more powerful Valar, and the less powerful Maiar. Melkor continues to disrupt the other Valar's plans, until finally he is forced to flee, and the Valar finish shaping Arda into a symmetrical land with two great lamps lighting the planet. During this time, plants and animals are awakened across the lands, and Melkor sneaks back into Arda. He has convinced one of the Maiar, who would come to be known as Sauron, to spy for him, reporting on the Valar's actions. Things come to a head when Melkor launches an attack on the two lamps, destroying them in a fiery cataclysm and changing the face of Arda forever. The Valar retreat to their new home of Valinor, where they create two large trees of light, thus ending the years of the lamps and beginning the years of the trees. During the early years of this period, one of the Valar creates the race of dwarves, but they are laid to rest to awaken after the elves. Another of the Valar begins gathering light from the two trees in order to fill the sky with stars. These stars would be the only light in Middle-earth and beyond for many years. Finally, the elves awaken in Middle-earth, marking the start of the First Age, while technically still being the years of the trees. Melkor begins capturing and corrupting elves, and the other Valar launch an attack on Melkor, known as the War of the Powers. Melkor is captured in the aftermath, and bound with a great chain in Valinor for many years. Sauron, now a full servant of Melkor, escapes capture and begins breeding orcs and trolls in his master's absence. To protect the elves from future threats, the Valar call for them to come from Middle-earth to Valinor. Many elves did not make it all the way to Valinor, spreading across Middle-earth in an event known as the Sundering of the Elves. Around this time, the first dwarves awaken, and begin building kingdoms in the various mountains of Middle-earth. Ents, also awakened during this time, created to protect the forests and plants of Middle-earth. Years go by where the elves and dwarves begin to thrive, and eventually Melkor is released from captivity and allowed to dwell in Valinor. Melkor, blaming the elves for the war that led to his capture, begins spreading discord and lies among the elves living in Valinor. A great elven smith named Feanor creates the three Silmarils and begins to believe some of Melkor's words, growing increasingly discontent with the Valar. Things come to a head with the darkening of Valinor, when Melkor, with the assistance of the great spider Ungoliant, destroyed the two trees and drained them of their light. Melkor slew Feanor's father and stole the three Silmarils, causing Feanor to swear an oath, stating that he and his sons will stop at nothing to retrieve the Silmarils. Feanor's people would immediately attack their fellow elves for their ships in an unprecedented move, and would sail east to Middle-earth to follow Melkor, now called Morgoth. Here, Feanor is slain by a group of Balrogs in front of Morgoth's fortress, and his sons begin dwelling in Middle-earth in order to fulfill their father's oath. The Valar finish crafting a new source of light, the sun and the moon, ushering in the years of the sun, although technically this is still within the First Age. The introduction of the sun coincided with the awakening of men in the far east of Middle-earth, much like the elves, Morgoth also began corrupting men, but some fled westwards and met with elves and dwarves. The great elven city of Gondolin is founded during this time, as well as the fortress of Nargothrond. Years of peace follow as Morgoth's fortress is besieged and his forces grow in strength. 
Finally, Morgoth breaks the siege, and the elven king Fingolfin challenges him to a duel, but dies doing so. Baron, a man, comes to the elven kingdom of Doriath, and falls in love with Luthien, an elf. Luthien's father, Thingol, sends Baron on a grand quest to retrieve a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown. Baron and Luthien both die after completing the quest, but are brought back to life. The Battle of Unnumbered Tears occurs, with both elves and men suffering a great defeat. In the years that follow, Turin Tarambar becomes a well-known hero of men, before finally meeting his end by committing suicide after killing the first dragon, Glaurung. A few years afterwards, Thingol, the elven king, wishes to place his Silmaril into a grand necklace. The necklace was given to Thingol as a gift, but he asked some dwarven craftsmen to place the Silmaril into it. After completing the project, the dwarves demanded the finished necklace as payment, as well as mentioning that the necklace should not have been given to Thingol in the first place. Thingol insulted the dwarves and ordered them to leave, causing the dwarves to slay him. This, and the following sacking of the city, would damage relations between elves and dwarves for many centuries to come. In the ensuing years, the sons of Feanor would cause much strife in their pursuit of the Silmaril, slaying more of their own kin as well as others. The great elven city of Gondolin fell to Morgoth's forces, and the First Age would finally culminate in the Great War of Wrath, as the free peoples with the assistance of the Valar finally defeated Morgoth and his armies. During the final battles, and Caligon the Black, the greatest dragon to ever live, would be killed by a half-elf named Yarendil, Elrond's father. Morgoth was chained once again, but this time cast into the timeless void, and peace set in with the end of the First Age. The Second Age commenced with the founding of the great kingdom of Numenor, on an island west of Middle-earth. The men who had fought against Morgoth were given the island as well as increased height and lifespans. Elrond's brother was the first king of Numenor, and the people there thrived for many years. Although they were experts on shipmaking and sailing, they were forbidden by the Valar to sail west to Valinor. Unfortunately, Sauron was still present in Middle-earth, and after beginning construction of the Dark Tower Baradur in Mordor, Sauron set out to deceive the elves into making a number of rings of power. With the assistance of the great elven smith Celebrimbor, the elves made sixteen rings of power. Celebrimbor made three more rings in secret, and Sauron made one of his own in secret. This one ring would control the others, and would end up being one of the most important objects in the history of Middle-earth. When Sauron put the one ring on, the elves immediately knew of his deception, and hid the three secret ones. The War of the Elves and Sauron begins, with Sauron killing Celebrimbor and taking at least the nine rings meant for men, and possibly the seven meant for the dwarves as well, although possibly Celebrimbor gave them to the dwarves himself. The realm of Rivendell was founded at this time by Elrond as a bastion against the might of Sauron. Not long after, the Ringwraiths make their first appearance, and the kingdom of Numenor begins to distance itself from the race of elves. Eventually, the king of Numenor sailed east to Middle-earth with a great fleet, marched to Mordor, and took Sauron as a prisoner. Sauron became content with his captivity and rose to power, corrupting the Numenorians and turning them against the Valar. Things came to a climax when Sauron convinced the king to break the ban of the Valar from sailing west, causing Eru Iluvatar to sink the island of Numenor and most of its people in a great cataclysm. A group of Numenorians who kept faithful to the Valar, led by Elendil, survived the disaster and sailed to Middle-earth. Here they founded the great kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor, and Sauron attacked Gondor as soon as he could. An alliance, formed between elves and men with the assistance of dwarves, marched on Mordor to confront Sauron, finally cutting the ring from his hand and destroying his physical form. Thus ends the Second Age of Middle-earth. Sildor takes the One Ring for himself, but is shortly after killed by a group of orcs, and the ring remains lost for many years. The Kingdom of Arnor is eventually split into three smaller kingdoms, although they were racked by war with the Witch King of Angmar, leader of the Nazgul. Although the men in the north ended up winning the war, the three kingdoms dissolved into groups of isolated, wandering people. Around this time, the Istari, or the Wizards, 
were sent to Middle-earth in order to assist the free peoples of Middle-earth with Sauron's inevitable return. The Shire is founded by a group of hobbits, although no one quite knows when hobbits first originated. The population of Gondor was severely diminished by a great plague, and the bloodlines of Numenor grew very limited. Despite this, the Kingdom of Angmar is destroyed by the armies of Gondor, but the Nazgul remain and continue to trouble Middle-earth. The dwarves of Khazad-dûm awaken a Balrog residing in the Misty Mountains around this time, who kills many dwarves before they flee. The location becomes commonly known as Moria, meaning Black Pit. Sauron continues to gain power at a stronghold in Mirkwood Forest before fleeing to hide his presence from an investigating Gandalf. He later returned to Mirkwood roughly 400 years later, around the same time that Smeagol obtains the One Ring of Power. The kingdoms of Rohan and Gondor form an alliance against orcs and servants of Sauron, and Smaug the Dragon destroys the town of Dale and takes over Erebor. The exiles of Erebor attempt to retake the kingdom of Moria, but are met with resistance from orcs, beginning the War of Dwarves and Orcs. Though they win the war, they do not retake Moria and are left in exile. Gandalf returns to Mirkwood Forest, confirming that Sauron is present, and retrieving a map from Thorin Oakenshield's father, who had been taken captive. Some years later, Gandalf gives the map to Thorin and begins the quest for Erebor, bringing along a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins. During the quest, Bilbo obtains the ring from Gollum, Smaug is killed, the Battle of Five Armies occurs, and Sauron is driven from Mirkwood by Gandalf and the White Council. Sauron returns to Mordor, making his presence openly known, and Aragorn first meets Gandalf around this time. Gollum gets captured by Sauron and tortured for information, and Bilbo has his 111th birthday, where he hands the One Ring over to Frodo before leaving the Shire. Gollum is released from Mordor before being captured again by Aragorn and Gandalf. The following two years make up the events of the War of the Ring, which are familiar to anyone who knows the plot of Lord of the Rings. In the end, Gollum takes the One Ring before falling into the cracks of Mount Doom, forever diminishing Sauron's presence on Middle-earth. Aragorn is crowned king of the reunited kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor, and the Fourth Age of Middle-earth begins. Our knowledge of the Fourth Age is marked mostly by the deaths of various individuals present during the War of the Ring, and it is unknown how long the Fourth Age lasted. While this is an extreme summary of the overall history of Middle-earth, I believe it should give some perspective about the extent of Tolkien's works. If you would like further information on most of the things mentioned here, please check out the rest of the Exploring Middle-earth series, as well as reading some of the materials yourself, primarily the Silmarillion. While most people who think of Tolkien will think of the events of the Two Years and the Third Age of Middle-earth, that is just a very small part of the immense timeline that Tolkien created.